Hello there and welcome to the value of everything. So this is probably one of the most important questions that someone can ask of their leaders. So could the people who I appoint to manage social organization or infrastructure for my local community, could they be controlled by someone else? Now, before we go into every category of how someone could be manipulated, there is a element of grey here. So, firstly, there is our social conditioning throughout our time. We have been given a lot of messages, be it from movies, from school, from a matter of different things, which has come together to be our moral compass and how to make good decisions. So from the very onset, somebody can be fairly screwed up. A couple of extremes of that is you could be raised in a family and from day one, they said, be a go-getter, fight your way to the top, be hyper-competitive and don't have any care or consideration for anyone else. Just make sure that you're number one. The next one could be more like, well... Um, care for your community and they will love you back and really you could be just guided upon doing things so people will love you and that's probably more of a preference of being loved in the moment rather than doing something that's uncomfortable for everyone but it is good in the long term so those two categories are the areas in which most people are falling in between There are very few which are like the Cicero types which will not accept Caesar's requests to endorse him even though it is very easy to but he would like to remain independent in his decision making. So before we even start there is obviously a little bit more nuances in terms of how somebody is channeling their lives and how are they managing positions of power. We're going to get into the gritty here. So in day-to-day dealings, can a person in a position of power be compromised? Once we go down the rabbit hole here, you'll start to go, hmm, maybe we shouldn't really grant anyone too much power because once that happens, there is all of these very manipulative tools which can be applied to that person. So, Firstly would be a blackmail, say for a threat to reveal something. Typically for a man, they could be put into a honey trap and they could be revealed so that could destroy that man's family. There could be extortion by the threat of force. So make sure your decision goes this way or you're going to find your business is going to be fixing up a lot of smash windows. That obviously transpires into some kind of economic extortion which can happen. But also this can happen from a very young age as well. So let's just say, for example, you're a young businessman and laws or bylaws have been passed to ensure that you're on the main prominent part of the street. There's all different manners of things that can happen. Let's just try and remedy as things go along with this honey trap scenario. Maybe we should state that only women can go in power. However, we've seen in certain scenarios when women have had power, they have adopted policies which have given the government state to look after healthcare, elderly care, child care as well, and to look after single motherhood, each one of those policies has had a backwards effect on the monogamy. So well-structured communities sometimes can go backwards on the prevalence of single sex making decisions. And uh, when I outline that, for a man's perspective, they probably have got more of a preference to dictatorship and they have a harem. It really does come down to society and sexuality at its basis. Okay, so now continuing on the shaming and blackmail path, let's just say that 
a few years have passed. There's a very dodgy government in power and they are sitting side by side by a company like Google, so like a major search engine, and they have the monopoly on the network. Now, what could quite easily happen is that they would like to pull a lot of information, say your search data, what everything that you've done on the internet. There could be a number of things which could put you in a lot of hot water if there was a opportunity for them to shame you. The interesting thing is, is that where there is a major position of power, you have no opportunity to expose the assailant because they have the position to block you. So obviously you don't have, you can try to block them, but they are everywhere. And even if you try to expose them, it's you going up against an entire network system, which is in every orifice of society. So what is the remedy against this? Well, you could say that there should be some kind of outright ban on any data collection on the innocent, which probably would be a good law, but that hasn't been passed. And then you could go so far as to say an outright ban on the internet. However, there is always positives and negatives side by side with what the internet provides and what freedoms it will encroach on. You can actually change the psyche of people in how they treat certain words. Words have incredible powers, particularly if they've been branded and there is a groupthink mentality against something. So, for example, uh, you could be branded as a anti-Semite for questioning information on how many Jews died in the Holocaust. You can be called a racist for describing biological differences between races Really, there is an incredible way in which group thinking can self-censor the people. And that is a method of power and control by the masses on the individuals, particularly when the seed is set from an early age. Now, in today's age, particularly when you see these new movies which have depicted Schwarzenegger and... I believe the recent Rogue One Star Wars movie had depicted a couple of actors which were CGI versions of themselves. This does bring into account The Running Man where you could quite easily create a CGI version of someone and put them in a awkward situation which could incriminate them or could put their family in to disarray so we're almost on the cusp of having that kind of incriminating technology by act of creating cgi versions Um, how would you compensate against this now the problem is is that once this is more prevalent and there is a capability of doing this then it comes into a realm of only certain experts can prove whether somebody is a cgi version or their actual selves now obviously this isn't today you can quite easily detect that somebody is cgi version or somebody that is real but As technology will develop, this will get a lot better. And say, for example, as AI gets involved in it as well, there will be a very, very few people with expert knowledge and detailed forensic scanning that can actually prove that this is a real person or not. Now, once this information is isolated to these individuals, then if you can control those individuals, really you have got an incredible capability of incriminating anyone and then just look into these individuals and saying is that them or not they say yes it is then they go to prison so how does that get compensated against well it may get to a point in which people don't trust anything that is on video anymore that means potentially even cctv cameras are not trusted there is a social revolt against it then it really just goes down to individual testimony of the event rather than the actual technology to prove it. There's some kind of reversal of the strength of the evidence. Okay, next up. Now, this one's been something that I've considered for some time, but I would say that it is probably the ultimate form of control. This is mind control, full mind control. 
So before we say, well, you can't really control somebody's mind and tell them what to do, well, hypnosis does exist. There are certain people who are more susceptible to hypnosis than others. Just with propaganda, if you can latch on to people from a very early age, then you can increase their susceptibility. So yeah, there is a subtlety of hypnosis which exists across the span. And we can quite easily accept that there could be people who select people from a very young age. Um, They put them under this spell of multiple personalities and at different stages selections have gone in their direction so that they can assume power yet they don't really have the power you just have to speak to them in their ear they have got your full attention and will carry out so this is a very dangerous type. Now, you probably wouldn't invest too much time on somebody who had a small amount of power. Maybe they've just got the power to open up doors at a certain time. But you can just see that if you give somebody an immense amount of power, if you make them a president, if you make them a world leader, then all you need to do is make sure that you have your pre-selected world leaders And when the time is right, they will come into power and you've assumed for a multi-generation control. Now, I know this does go down into the conspiracy theory banks, but you have to say that this is probably the most extreme threat that the people could ever have. As none of their decisions would necessarily be carried out. Obviously, it could be smoke and mirrors, but it does dovetail fit into a lot of what happens in society today. For example, Barack Obama says that he will come into power and he will change the world. He will change the world's perception on America to make it a peaceless country. And yet Obama has continued a number of wars. He's particularly gone after anybody who has been a whistleblower on the surveillance of the people. Now, how do you avoid the mind control? This gets very interesting because you really have to state that no one should assume any type of power. If anything, the power should just remain with the individual, the voter. So this does really lend us into the realm of anarchy where there is a society without any major type of ruler. So there's probably many more different versions of power and control that you can apply to people. But as I outlined earlier, if you are unable to expose that person or that group, then you cannot be proven legitimate against the others. So there really needs to be multiple exposures of what is going on for there to be a freer society without the manipulation of power to continue. So as I'm an advocate of blockchain technology, maybe there should be a decentralized network of exposed information. You could say that this is a type of WikiLeaks, whereby there is a continuous outline and exposure of secret manipulative things which are going on in the background. There is a level of people who can expose this information anonymous to a certain level. And really the groups who have been exposed really should be answerable, not non-answerable. In a future society, maybe a multiple exposure system which outlines secrets could be a future vision. Now, also, obviously, you do have the the blocking capability. So in, say, for example, multiple micro societies, you can choose to not trade with that group anymore. They could be segregated. But the important thing here is, is that when you block somebody off, you've really got to have some kind of asylum somewhere else. 
So really it comes down to the fact that there should never be anything that is too great, too powerful that you've got nowhere else to hide. And you could also say that every threat comes down to an extortion or blackmailing, which leads to some kind of economic or ethical problem. And there is a real problem in which when somebody accumulates too much wealth, then they have a significant power on the system. So even with the economic power that somebody can have on the system, you could in multiple societies with different currencies or different blockchain currencies, there can be a choice of the people to say that somebody has accumulated too much wealth in a particular currency. They choose not to participate in that currency anymore. And therefore that person's power has been controlled by the masses to say that there is a danger. Maybe we do not need to participate in this currency anymore because there is a grand manipulator behind it. Now that happens in stock market trading as well. If somebody's too big for the market, then people do not participate in anymore because of the prevalence of manipulations. So that's just one of the areas in which a blockchain society could address the economic problems with somebody accumulating too much wealth. Even in today's society, we do have problems where you can have the government searching through your tax returns to see if there has been any false claims and there's so many different little bylaws that they can find you for something and then also there is the other situation in terms of law if they have accumulated so much wealth then they can send somebody to court by government law and they drain them and drain them until your assets have gone down yet because they've got so many assets they can continue it on for ever more until they've put you in a type of economic poverty. Now, both with those situations, obviously tax returns probably would not exist in a blockchain society because everything is in a fairly transparent ledger, which is continuing around. And really there isn't a centralized authority which is taking this, there's just businesses which are running balance sheets. In terms of courts, lawyers and people facing debts, then as soon as you do some kind of trade with someone else with a particular currency, there usually will be some protection methods for people to trade within that currency. So, for example, let's just say eBay is um, running on its own currency. Therefore, when you trade through that merchant, then there is certain levels of protection with it. Therefore, there'll be some arbitrator which will be provided when transactions happen. If people say that this is not a very fair method, then people will choose a different method of trading with each other and use different blockchain technology or different uh, eBay type trading merchant. So if the masses or the individuals have the power to choose and choose different networks in accordance to not letting the power get out of control, then we have a society which will be free. So thank you very much. Let me know any feedback below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Also, if you would like to subscribe or like, it will be very much appreciated.